Rupert's Tales, The Wheel of the Year, Savain, Yule, Imbolc, Ostara, by Kyria, illustrated by Tanya Bennington Osborne. Rupert's Imbolc Invitation Rupert the rabbit was cold, oh so very cold. All of the snow and ice was getting really old. The branches above him were bare as could be. His friends were all sleeping and so was the tree. Here, on the edge of the forest, was a thick grove of trees, elms, oaks, birch, and many cypress with their long, knobby knees. Tomorrow, he thought, all the people will come, with their dancing, chanting, rituals, and drums. No matter the season, right here was their place, a meadow or clearing, a kind of round space. He wondered, though, if this time they might just stay away. The weather was still freezing even during the day. Pushed around by the wind, the snow had been blowing, and for a long time now, nothing had been growing. Even though he knew grass wasn't something people eat, it was all gone now, along with the clover so sweet. The Maybon goodies were gone he'd helped Melvin collect. The apples, nuts, and onions, he knew, because he'd checked. No, the people might not come this time, he was afraid, or if they did, the cold weather might make them delayed. He thought their big, tall fires might not be enough, even if they had blankets and tents and other warm stuff. Oh, they'll come all right, he heard a small voice say. There's no need to worry. They won't stay away. It must be a fairy, Rupert thought, one with sparkling wings. Why, yes, said a cheerful voice, and I've come to show you some things. Then he appeared, that fairy, right in front of Rupert's face. It happened so fast, Rupert gasped, stepping back half a pace. The fairy swooped, soared, and whirled, just like the one before. He clapped his hands, laughed out loud, then flew around some more. This fairy was lots of fun, and all dressed in shimmering white. The silver lace through his wings was shiny and sparkling bright. Tomorrow is the day they'll come to celebrate and sing. It's time, you know, he smiled, to start thinking about spring. Spring, thought Rupert, wearing a big happy grin. That means lots of sweet grass and clover again. Yes, agreed the fairy. It's time for a changing of the seasons, even though it'll be a while still before you feel the reasons. The Sabbath people celebrate is often called in bulk by name. The people in their rituals use a lot of candles and flame. Rupert looked all around him, seeing nothing but ice and snow. He wondered just how anything was supposed to start to grow. Oh, you silly rabbit, the fairy laughed, floating in the air. The earth will soon burst forth with so many colors everywhere. Under the snow and ice are many plants, bulbs, and seeds. All winter goddess shelters them, tending to their needs. But now that Yule has passed and the days are growing longer, the sun stays in the sky each day just a little longer. God and goddess long ago put nature's rules into play, so in all things, everywhere, balance what always holds sway. But the people, Rupert said, I know their songs are a special treat. The prayers and chants to God and goddess seem to make the day complete. Are you sure they will come, even though it's so cold out? Are you really, really sure? Do you have any doubt? Oh, my furry friend, the fairy laughed. Hurry now, come along with me. Opening his wings wide, he flew away, saying, Just you wait and see. And so Rupert ran and hopped and hurried after his new friend, wondering where they might be going and where the trail would end. Quickly down the hill and then over the river and through the woods, he did run watching the colors of the fairy's wings sparkle in the afternoon sun. With Rupert's long legs, it didn't take the friends very long at all, before they stopped by a tree that was very big and very tall. And there, by the tree, was a little lake all covered in snow. But what the fairy wanted him to do, Rupert didn't know. This is the place exactly right here. Take a look. I invite you to see, the fairy said, pointing a finger at a place where the lake touched the tree. When the fairy waved one small hand, leaving sparkles in the air, weaving glittering twinkles and colorful sparks everywhere. Next, the fairy whirled and twirled, clearing a circle of snow away, until Rupert could see the frozen lake, 
that under the snow lay. When Rupert looked, he saw people, but not the ones he already knew. Tiny figures in the ice doing strange things that to him were brand new. See that woman there? asked the fairy. She's leaving out a ribbon made of silk. And there's a small boy, he said, pointing at the ice, putting out a glass of milk. These are things left for Brigid, a fiery goddess of great fame. At Imbolc, there are many who seek her favor and bless her name. But tomorrow is the special day that people gather here. Why, Rupert asked, frowning, are these pictures in the ice so clear? It's magic, of course, said the fairy, clearly pleased with himself, grinning from ear to ear like some mischievous little elf. No, these are scenes from Imbolc Sabbaths long ago, sometime in the past. You better look closely, though, he warned, for like the snow, they cannot last. Rupert made a face when he suddenly heard a lot of noise. He saw there in the icy mirror a group of girls and boys. They were banging pots and pans gathered in a circle round. Rupert's long ears hurt from all that awful, clattering sound. What are they doing? Rupert asked, and why would they do such a thing? It's their job, the fairy said, to awaken the spirits of spring. And see there, he said, pointing, looking at an old woman using a broom. She'll put that by the front door and welcome when she's done cleaning every room. Milk, brooms, ribbons, and pots and pans? Ugh, I'm so confused. Can you tell me how all these strange things are being used? For people, my friend, in bulk can be so many different things, the fairy said, twisting and turning and fluttering his wings. Halfway between Yule and Ostara, winter is on its way out. But still the dark time of year, and cold, there isn't any doubt. Imbolc reminds us that spring is coming before very long, and gives us the chance to raise our voices in chant and in song. Oh, look, said Rupert, still gazing into the ice-covered lake. See those people? I wonder what it is they're going to make. They're gathered all together in a circle, each raising a hand. But what it is they're doing is something I just don't understand. They're making an important promise, the fairy explained with a smile. In bulk is the time of beginnings for things that can take quite a while. In bulk is the time for the quickening of the earth, time to get ready for nature's cycle of rebirth. As the season has a beginning, so too must it have an end. So how long, Rupert wanted to know, before I'll be warm again? There's a saying that people have, just like the ones you know. Now listen very carefully. For this is how it goes. If in bulk day be fair and bright, winter will have another flight. If in bulk day be clouds and rain, winter's gone and won't come again. So what that means, if I understand what you're saying right, is that winter might not be done, but then again, it might. Yes, the fairy sighed. I'm afraid that's the way it often goes. Sometimes, even on all star day, we still have ice and snow. That's the nature of nature. There isn't anything wrong. As you know, the nights will grow short and the days will grow long. No matter how we mark it or celebrate in bulk day, the wheel of the year is turning and spring will come our way. Some make dolls or candles or important promises to keep. Some build fires, praise the light, or wait for the seeds they've buried deep. Yes, you'll find there's many ways and paths and rituals and feasts to welcome spring no matter if you're people, fairy, or woodland beast. So, my friend, enjoy the day, the fairy said, and have a little fun. Go help the people welcome spring and the return of the warmer sun. Rupert thanked the fairy for all he'd learned about in bulk and about spring, then wondered as he headed back to his tree about one more little thing. If he was a human boy with hands and feet and a voice, how would he celebrate in bulk? What would be his choice? Hmm. The end.